everyone. Welcome back to the Growing and Flowing podcast. My name is Brandy. If you're new here, feel free to call me Brand. I do love when people call me that. So I am back with another guest episode. Super excited um, with Brittany. So um, Brittany is somebody else that I met at one of Drew's event, the um, Inner Child Healing Workshop, which oddly enough, I guess episode that's going to drop before this, I met her there as well. So great connection. So go ahead and tell the people about yourself. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm Brittany. I am the owner of Grace Yourself. I'm originally from Virginia. Um, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> okay. If that's all you want, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so now I was, you know, on your Instagram a little bit before um, before I did some of my questions, and I was looking at Grace Yourself. So yeah, tell us a little bit about Grace Grace Yourself. Yes. Yeah, so Grace Yourself started uh, March 31st, 2021. So my two year anniversary is coming up at the end of this month. Um, and yeah, so Grace Yourself started just kind of as an idea that I had like during the pandemic, because um, I, I journal all the time, like literally since I was a kid, my mom is like, Brittany has been writing out her life like since she was <laughs> a kid. And I have, and it's like, when the pandemic started, it was like, okay, I have like nothing really going on because every day was the same, like yeah. we're inside, everybody's quarantining. And so, um, yeah, I just started trying to figure out like different things to start writing about so that I wasn't bored. And it turned into like me trying to discover myself um, outside of like, because once the world stopped, it was like, what is going on? Like, who, who am I? <laughs> Yeah, what is yeah. going on? What is happening in the world? So, like, yeah. So, um, I was also in therapy at the time. I'm still in therapy, but I was at there in, in therapy at the time, and um, yeah, I was just trying to figure out something else to get into, something to to um make time move by faster. I guess you could say during the pandemic, and um, yeah, it turned into me kind of just like writing new prompts for myself every day. I was sending them to my friends. I was discussing them with my therapist. And then it turned into 200 questions all about learning about yourself. So that is gracious. So. Nice. Nice. And then I was looking at um, what you have on your website that goes underneath your logo. Give yourself some grace while you learn and grow. So did that just come naturally to you or how you come up with it? <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. It was like what I was telling myself because it was like, dang, like some of the stuff that I was doing isn't OK. But like I have to forgive myself and like learn healthier ways to do things. So mm -hmm. that's kind of really what it was. I had to tell myself, like, it's OK. Like you're a person. Yeah. You're not perfect. You're going to figure it out just like everybody else has to figure it out. So that was okay. it. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. I like that. Um, I think a lot of people had a lot of ideas during COVID. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a pivotal moment for a lot of people. Um, because for me, like I pivoted careers. Um mm -hmm. greatest thing I ever did. But I don't I don't know if I would have thought to to do that at that moment if the pandemic didn't happen. Exactly. Um, so of course, very very terrible things have came out of the pandemic, but some good things as well. So that's good to hear. Um now, do you still struggle sometimes with giving yourself grace? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely I am like my biggest critic but I am also like okay so I told you I'm in therapy I'm like yeah. very self-aware so like I can catch myself and be like girl why are you going that hard on yourself like it yeah. is okay like calm down yeah you still and, did things today even if and you didn't I think sometimes I still struggle with it I'm better at it than what I used to be um because when I had started therapy um, I think, yeah, it was 2021, later half, latter half in 2021. And mm -hmm. I, um, that was my first time in therapy. And then I had to find a new therapist because I moved. And I remember I came to her because it was like, I feel like something happened. And I was like, yo, I need some help. Let's get back in therapy. And she told me, she was like, well, you're very in tune and you're very self-aware. But like, I think at that point I was very self-aware, but I didn't know what to do with the self-awareness. Like I was scratching That's the surface yeah. of a lot of my stuff, but I wasn't digging deeper. So yeah. as I started digging deeper, it's just like, dang, Brandy, you did some of that stuff. And I think <laughs> Ooh, <yeah. laughs> and I think it was hard for me when I first started doing some deep work to like give myself that grace and to tell mm -hmm. myself it's okay. Because it's like, okay, you're addressing it now, but I was feeling real ill for a little second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um 
Now, so I was seeing on, on your page that you partner with a lot of, you know, a lot of different brands, a lot of different shops that your journals are available in. And I think that's, that's super dope. So, yeah. and you say you have a nine to five, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> so do you struggle to balance with your nine to five? Like, does it make it difficult to be a business? Because I see you got a site and everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> So when I originally started Grace Yourself, I was working in a different position. I actually just started a new job um, mm -hmm. in December, this past December. So it looks very different. So I'll explain both. Um, but before my new job, like my old job, it was tough because like that job was like um, demanding. It had demanding seasons. So it was like, you're really, really busy this season. You work in from like, you're supposed to work nine to five. You work in from nine to nine. Um, so... I do want to post. I do want to add things, but like realistically, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how it that's how it used to be. Um, but for me now, like my job is a lot more flexible, um, and I feel like I'm actually living. You know how people say like your nine to five is supposed to fund like your dream, whatever. Yeah. That's that's where I'm at now. It's like wow, I have like time for work, and it doesn't feel stressful. And like I have a good work life balance. Like it doesn't feel stressful at all. I get my stuff done, and then I still have energy and time left for my business to work on your thing yeah, yeah so 2023 i have already like i've started off going hard but like we're going really hard this year because like i have the time now that is so great i love to hear yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> i think that's kind of how i felt when i switched careers because like um i was in retail so like mm. i was in management in retail so working me to the bone like yeah. during holiday seasons i had like 15 hour days it was super crazy. So when I got to the point where, oh, okay, I work a Monday through Friday, regular times off the weekend, I think I had to get used to that because it was just so different for me. And yeah. then I already started my podcast and like, wow, I have time to like, to work on some of that ideas. So this year, although I feel like, I feel like my year had just started like two weeks ago <laughs> and that's okay. And that's okay. Yeah, that <laughs> but like, yeah, and I've been having like a lot of ideas and like I feel good about this year for what I want to work on. So yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's, dope, that's dope. Okay, so in totality, and you don't have to get into deep details, but what do you envision for your brand? Oh, I can I can give you the whole vision because okay. I, I, I literally like visualize very vividly, very vividly. And I write it all down. And that's like back to what my mom was saying, like, Brittany really like writes out her life and then I live that whatever I wrote out. Um, so yeah, for grace yourself, like in a couple of years, I want to have a storefront. I want it to be like a whole like inclusive black woman owned stationary store with like, but I want it to give a luxury, like Okay. Quality stationary items, but also like some wellness things because like journaling is definitely like a wellness activity. So definitely some wellness things, some, you know, things for your home. I, I got this whole idea. Like I can, I can see it and everything, but yeah, so definitely a storefront, definitely a lot more new products. I have some coming probably by the time that this drops, um, some new stuff will be out. So yeah. Yeah, lots of new things. Lots of new things. I told you, 2023, we are going very hard because I have the time and the energy. So I'm about to get it done. It's going to be a couple more stores where Grace Yourself pops up in. Um, a couple more stores where my journals are sold in. Um, and yeah, hopefully working towards getting my own store. Yes, and I love how sure you sound. That is yeah. Great. I love it. I love when, when Black women be doing the things that really all yeah. happy, you know? Exactly. I, yeah, I love that. Um, and then, so you launching two years ago during Women's History Month, was that intentional or it just happened to drop? Yeah, it was intentional. I, um, in my head, so I didn't like really struggle growing up. Like my mom was very making sure that um, generational wealth was a thing in our okay. household. So I'm, I don't think, I don't know if I'm necessarily making history with what I'm doing, but um, I definitely, it definitely motivated me to, to just like take my business seriously or like, you know, try to make history. So. Nice. <laughs> oh, okay. So now um, being that it is Women's History Month without getting too deep into history, because I just feel like I don't have 
It's not my bag, but yeah. um, <laughs> you know, I don't think I have the bandwidth for that. But I do want to ask, like, so, you know, some you know, some women based questions. Um, so, is why? This, huh? Is this like trivia? Oh no, 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 we're not. Oh, okay, okay. Because I was about to say I'm about to get every single thing wrong. Okay, <laughs> but no, because I wouldn't have known the answers before I asked. <laughs> no, no, no I read again. <laughs> So no historic questions. I swear. Okay. All right. I am ready. Okay. Why do you think we need a special month to honor women? Um, I think that women get slept on like the most, um, especially black women. I think that there yeah. needs to be a black women history month too. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, I think that we do a lot of the things in the background and like we make the world run, but like everybody else gets the credit. Yeah, yeah, because I think that's so true as well. Although, you know, advocating for all women, of course, but I think it's important to emphasize, like you said, I feel like Black women should have a separate month because regardless, there's still an imbalance between races. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's very, it's been very apparent like especially when the pandemic started and yeah like we do a lot of things and we are capable of doing a lot of things and I just feel like we live in a world and we have lived in the world where we we just got to be in this box and I just saw women like you know pushing that mode and I yeah every day should be a celebration for us exactly (laughs) Exactly. um so what are or the biggest, whatever one works best for you. Um, but what are some of the biggest obstacles obstacles you feel like women face today? Um, I don't even know. I don't want to speak for all women, but I guess like yeah. if I did have to choose one, I would just say like society's like standards or uh, pressure. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think that like sums it up perfectly. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, for me, just simply existing. Cause like, I think that for like really hit when the Roe versus Wade situation happened, that had me feeling some type of way. I still feel some type of way to this day when things come up on the news. I don't really watch the news a lot because it really like, yeah. So it makes me mad. Like, why are we even having a discussion when you don't even own these body parts? Like, come on. Exactly. And it's like during the pandemic, I'm like, this is what we focusing on right now. Like, I thought that's my like water is still not clean in a lot of places. And you worried about what I'm doing. And I just. Yeah, that was that was so that. Yeah. And I'm like, it's just so many other things going on in the world that need our attention. Um, especially as we go towards this recession, they're trying to act like we're not in a recession, but we basically that's, you know what I'm saying? They've been trying to act like it's, that's not what it is. And it's just like, it's just like, wow, through all of this, we still get in the shorter end of the stick. Every time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every time. Every time. Um, now I know you mentioned your um, mom a lot, yeah. um, but is there anyone who paved the way for you? If her, who if not, or multiple people that have? What do you mean pick the way for me? Like in what way? I would say, okay, let's do two ways. Um, okay. Who you are as a person today and then okay. as you move forward with your business. Okay. My mom for sure is like for who I am today. Um, yeah, that's my best friend. That's my, that's my girl. Um, <laughs> so definitely my mom, like we watch her make all of our dreams come true for us. So like, yeah, that's nice. my girl. Um, so definitely my mom paved the way on that end. And then as far as my business, my mom still like, my mom is a business lady. My mom works, runs multiple businesses, is involved in the church, involved in the community, helps everybody. So it's like, girl, how do you even find time? She's a superwoman. Nice. That's the word. So yeah, I would say my mom for both. Okay. That's good. Um, yeah. Which I love to hear that people have those type of relationships with their mom. Now I'm not yeah. going to say that I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess because like, um, typically, you know, I like to have on guests that have like a different upbringing than me. Um, mm-hmm. my only child and my mom, she always just taught me to work, 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 work. And it's like, I don't hinder her, hinder her for that. So I think she paved the way for me in 
life skills. Like, I have some life skills that I that I got some years back that I am thankful that I have right now, um, especially because I'm about to be 29 in the month, which is crazy to me. But um, <laughs> so I am super thankful for that. Um, I think she definitely paved the way in um, me being independent, independent, making sure I get things done. Um, I am thankful for that. I think I've been trying to find the health in that now, because I think in the past I've been doing that in a very unhealthy way. Um, mm -hmm. So as I continue my things and build on my creative things and figure out the business aspect, I think that's been hard because it's like, I don't really have that in my life. So yeah, but I think to answer the question though, <laughs> I, do <think laughs> my mom, I do think my mom paved the way for me in a certain way. I think now I'm kind of looking for some people that I can look up to in my life that can help me. Cause I feel like I just don't know that part of me. Yeah. Um, so have you had a mentor before? No. You actually, should. you should get one. And it's so crazy. And as I say that, I said that out loud up here. And I'm, I don't think I've ever said that to myself besides right now. Um, so, yeah, I do need to do that. Um, yeah. Asking for help has always been hard for me. So, same. Mm -hmm. But I definitely do think I need to find a mentor. I think that will help me out because I do have times where I feel like super lost, which I feel like is normal mm -hmm. as you get older. But as I explore that side of myself, some days I just be like, yo, like how you said during the pandemic, like, who am I? I yeah, it's like, what's going on? Like, what are we yeah, doing? I've, been, I've been having a lot of those days lately. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's just hard to pick myself up some days, but we working through it. Again, definitely, definitely do need to, to give me a mentor. Um, but next, so how do you feel about the comparison of women today against other women? hate it I hate it I don't want to be like anyone else so like I don't think that we should be comparing people at all like guys shouldn't be compared against guys like I think that everybody is one of one yeah like and that's everybody just what it is their own yeah. mm -hmm. and I think I feel like in media um because I'll be on Twitter I love Twitter I yeah like same. <laughs> Twitter is where I live yeah, if I had to get rid of everything else, like I would definitely keep it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you'll see like the different comparison threads. Yeah, and, like, especially when it comes to like women in rap, like you'll see four of them, and I'm just like, why does everything have to be women against women? Why can't yeah. women coexist in a space where everybody has their own thing? And everybody has their own lane. I don't, I just feel like that's just always a conversation. And I'm just like, what is this even about? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. and I don't know if I'm mentioning her name correctly. Is it Mulatto? You know what I'm talking about? Not Lotto. Mulatto. Yeah. <laughs> Dark skin kind of. Oh no, I don't know who that gender. is. So she's a rapper. Um, she's from she's from Memphis, and not too long ago, you know, she was having a conversation about because I think this goes back to the comparison. Um, you know, we get into the topic of skin color, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the threads too that I see would be comparing women, like which one you choosing, and then like sometimes or the most beautiful women in the industry or something like that. And some mm -hmm. of my dark skin queens, sisters, all that do, don't get mentioned. And I think it's crazy to me how we still live in a day and an age where we still think a certain grade, shade, or whatever is superior to another. And I don't know. I just, I think it's just, it just makes it harder for some people that's, and I couldn't imagine being in the industry in that way because you sometimes oh. people work extra hard to be seen. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I think it is though? I think it's, I think overall it's just ego. Like that's what it boils down to is like nobody wants to be the bottom of the bottom so everybody like creates these different things to compare these different things to like differentiate themselves from others when it's like everybody could be lit here literally like, everybody especially when it comes to talent too it's, i feel like exactly. there's so many talented people that i just discover if it's music or like if i'm just on youtube looking at some series or, or even on tiktok like i've seen some super great creators and it's just, sometimes people go to the wayside and i just be like yeah. what hmm. um now how do you feel if you have any thought on it how do you feel about the relationship um that women have with their body throughout history, how that has changed. It's crazy because like, I'm going through this like phase of 
realizing, I guess, that I have body di- that I have body dysmorphia, and then like working through that because like I don't think that I even realized that that's what it was. But like, yeah. Um. So how do I feel about it? Like over time, I think that like. I think that the more like we fall in love with ourselves, the more like we just really will not care. Cause after discovering that I have body as much, like I recently like just came out of a phase or just like entered a phase, I guess, of um, really being in love with myself. Like I am like obsessed with me right now. Like it is, it's different. Cause like I've never been this way before, but like, so now I'm like, I am perfect. Like I don't care if I don't have the fattest of butts or the biggest of boobs, like it's given over here. <laughs> that's how I feel like I think that everybody just really needs to like date yourself and like really fall in love with yourself yeah yeah and I, I really don't care what other people have to say about like your body for you to want to change it you know yeah yeah that's dope I think I've been in that that era as well of like really loving myself I've been doing the work I'll be looking in the mirror and I'll be like Girl. yeah <laughs> Girl. But it's almost as if I see a different person yeah. And no, and it's not that I thought that I wasn't attractive beforehand, but it's like I'm carrying it a different way. Right. You know? Um, because I in 2019 I lost 40 pounds. And I think that gave me a different type of confidence. But I think I went through the era of like while I was losing weight. So when I lost weight, I lost everything. Like everything went like everything. Yeah. <laughs> And people used to think I had a butt, but I was like, no, I have hips. Like I do not, <laughs> I didn't, I did not have a butt. Yeah. And, but then I had got though. Some people would tell me, especially when I was at work, oh, I love the way you looked before. Why are you losing all that weight? You know, the unsolicited stuff. We and- just had a conversation on Twitter. Me and <laughs> me and <laughs> one of the girls from the area. But um, literally, like everything you just said is it. And people were really like, I think stuff that's really personal, right? And yeah. people, and sometimes, and I don't want to call it that, but I think sometimes people will put some of their insecurities on you or just their vision of you. And I'm just like, well, this is what makes me happy. I wasn't comfortable in my skin. So like, that's why I made a change. And I think that was the best thing I ever did for myself. But as I go through this era of a different type of, of self-love like I finally done figured out how to build my butt like the way that I want <laughs> that I'm on my journey right now I'm on my journey I'm on my journey we get in the shelf yes and when you and when you figure out the things that works it took me a while to figure out how to do that myself because when I lost yeah. weight I did it all by myself because I love a challenge it makes things fun for me like when I'd like challenge myself in that way and it took me a while to figure out genetic was like all right girl yeah. it's fine. you got to figure out the exercises and I'm like over these past few months, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at the growth. Exactly. And that makes me excited to keep going. Exactly. And yeah, I'm just falling in love with the process. So I've been trying to do that with that, but in general, in life. But even in that, like, you got to give yourself grace. Because it's mm-hmm. like, some days, the weights feel heavier than normal. And <laughs> like, it's okay if you need to go down five pounds, okay? Just... That is all right. You still getting the exercise done. You still doing what you need to do. Like, it is all right. Because I have to tell myself that sometimes. I'm like, we are not doing 20 reps today. We're not. We're going to do 15. <laughs> Yo, the other day, I had got on the Stairmaster. <laughs> and I think the day before that, I had did, like, a crazy workout. And I did one minute. I said, absolutely not. We got to do a different cardio. Because I yep. felt But for a second, I felt bad. But I had to switch it. I'm like, why you feel bad? You went hard yesterday. Maybe you just shouldn't be doing the Stairmaster today. Balance. There you go. <laughs> and oh, and one other thing on that topic that I wanted to say. Um, <laughs> what's been interesting to me as we as we go through history and historic events, and I'm like, wow, we're the new adults, right? And you look at from the time from the like the early 2000s and to now. I remember I was in Miami in September. And we was in like a club. And the last time I've been to Miami was undergrad. I think it was like 2015, 2016. Yeah. And, you know, and it's no nothing wrong with anybody getting their body done or anything like that. I think I was just looking around and we were in the club. And I was like, wow, we're, this is what people expect in Miami. Like all the girlies had, you know, had the BBLs, like the ones that work there or whatever. Yeah. And interesting now it's like, okay, as people that are, you know, 
that aren't doing that type of work or that aren't in the industries, you know, work on their body and get BBLs and all that other stuff. It's crazy how you see some celebrities reverting back. Right. Um, oh my gosh. This is, this is why I don't even think that like, this is why we shouldn't compare ourselves. This is why like, so everything changes so quickly. Like the trends are fleeting, like in and out. In and out, in and out. And it's like the people that jump on, okay. And then it changes. And then when the celebrities that are, for instance, like Kim Kardashian, you know, her, she's getting more of the, like the slender took out some of her yeah. stuff. And, and I just feel like that's because it's because so many people are doing the thing. And then it's like, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just been very interesting to me. And, you know, when I be on TikTok and I see the younger people, I just wonder what goes through the kids' minds. Like, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to, because they're growing up in the age of technology. Of social media. They say everything. And it was so different. Because, like, when I was growing up, it was, like, MySpace and, like, Facebook. And it was just coming about and, like, getting yeah. into they even, even like even when we were growing up like the video girls didn't have the biggest butts and like the bbl type body that they have mm -hmm. now it was everybody wanted the slim like you know so it's like it's, even like these things change so much like i'm not even about to try to keep up with it like i'm gonna give y'all Brittany. <laughs> please take, take, it leave it. take it or leave it yeah. <laughs> period <laughs> Um, so next, was it, what does it mean to you to be a strong woman? Um, I think that, okay. So in my new phase of loving myself, I think that like my definition has changed. Cause I don't, I don't think that like, I don't like the strong woman, like takes on the world, takes on everybody's problems, neglects herself so that everybody else is happy. Like, I hate that. I think that a strong woman upholds her boundaries. She respects her and honors her own boundaries and herself and like does what she can, um, does what she can for others. But ultimately, like I can't pour out of an empty cup. So like I can't even be a strong woman if I'm not full, you know, or if I don't have anything to pour. That is a word because... <laughs> I've really been learning that. It's like, I think in some aspects, um, I'm a former people pleaser. Um, I am still and, getting over it. We were and, I, and I can't be in some ways, but I, it's like now I'm so aware that I'm cognizant of when I'm doing that. And it's just like, Brandy, mm -hmm. all right, but check in with yourself. How are you feeling before mm -hmm. you try to decide how somebody else is feeling? Um, but yes, like I'm very, I've been very firm in my boundaries these days and realizing that if people cannot take your boundaries, Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying in every case, but maybe they were never your friends in the first place. Like you gotta, you got. I've been asking myself those questions. It's no, like, yeah, why? you have to reevaluate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just learning that that is a part of growth mm -hmm. and standing firm and being okay with like making those decisions with my boundaries. Mm -hmm. And if anybody cares about you, they should respect your boundaries. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I was about to say. And I think for me to be a strong woman, I think um, resilience. Um, I have loved that word like for some years. I have it tatted on me. Um, but like now I'm managing again the health of my relationship with being resilient because sometimes I just I'll try to do a million things, I try to take on a million things, and then like I get to the point where like, okay, girl, you are burnt out. Like what yes. you know what I'm saying? So finding my balance with that, and that doesn't mean because I'm resilient, doesn't mean I always have to push myself to my limit. And mm -hmm. try to bounce back for that and like make myself feel bad for not bouncing back in this time. Just not having that, that uh, expectation of myself that I've had in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me and my therapist spend so much time just talking about like self-criticism and like self-judgment and just like how much pressure we put on ourselves. Because it's just like nobody say you had to do 20 things today. <laughs> you told yourself that and then you got mad at yourself when you did 10. And yeah. like. Then it's great. Like that was still an A plus. Yeah. And I will always remember my first therapist. She would she would say, um, she told me, she was like, Okay, you had a to do list today. Now yeah. did you get anything done on the list? And I'm like, and I used to be like, Yeah. And she was like, Okay, then that's good enough. Like, and then she also used to ask me, she was like, Okay, well, was that list realistic in the first place? Exactly. And that's how we always mess up because realistically, we are not doing all 20 of those things in a day. We not, and especially when I put things on my desk for like a work day too, I'm mm -hmm. just like, Brandy, be for real. Like, 
for. <laughs> be for real. So yeah, like, yeah, because I used to be the type of person that used to be very hard on myself all the time. And if I didn't upstand, uphold this certain standard for myself, it just, I used to just, I used to have times where I would just spiral. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. Slippery, slippery slope, slippery slope. <laughs> yeah, I literally same exact thing. I was the kid who like made straight A's from elementary school up until high school. So like everybody expected me to be like this perfect student who like had her whole life together. And it's like, now I'm living up to y'all's expectations, yeah. but I don't even want to do that. Yeah, yeah. And I think, and I've had friends in the past or like acquaintances and because me, I'm fully, cap- I, I'm fully capable of figuring out anything. Like that's my thing. Mm-hmm. And I would have like people like reach out to me to help them with X, Y, and Z. And I used to oppose like, oh man, so if I don't get this done in this time frame, or like if I tell them I can't do this, like, you know what I'm saying? I used to be yeah. so bad. Cause it's just like, yo, I gotta figure this out because they think I can do it and I know I can, but like, uh, yes. Giving myself that timeline and just, I think, yeah, again, people pleasing. <laughs> yeah, you gotta remove the pressure. Remove the pressure. Yes. Give yourself yes. grace. Because it's not good for me. I realize that it's not. It's not mm-hmm. good for my. Um, so I asked you about you know some women that have paved the paved the way for you. Now, mm-hmm. is there any inspiring women that you look up to? I would say not in your life, like celebrity wise, or just you know, not even people you maybe not know well. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> This is hard. Um, a woman that I look up to that I like to love her, you're like not in my life. Um, <laughs> all I can think of is like, I don't know. Okay. One is Lauren Hill. Okay. She's my all time favorite artist. <clears throat> All time favorite artist, but also just like I love how free she is, how like carefree she is, how like she doesn't try to meet society standards and she'll let y'all know, like, I'm not trying to meet your standards. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's definitely that's definitely one. Like anytime I'm in a bad mood or like need some motivation, anything like I feel like, yeah, Lauren is the go to. <laughs> Yeah, I like watch her interviews when I need motivation. Yeah. I listen to her music when I need motivation. Um, but also, like sometimes when I'm like judging myself really hard, I'm like, well, let me let me go back and listen yeah. to more of my love. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I think for me, um, well, I got a few, but like major ones for me. One is Issa Rae. I love Issa Rae. Um, oh yes, yeah, absolutely. That's, is- okay, that's what I was trying to think of. I was trying to think of like. <laughs> One, one, one good woman who is running her. So I love that. Issa very yeah. much. I loved when she dropped her wedding thing. It's like, okay, like, is it real or is it not? Or like, or like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. How she um insecure, how she always talked about like, no, there's gonna these episodes ain't getting longer than 30 minutes. This is all y'all getting. Okay, <laughs> five seasons. And I love how she stuck to that because that's yeah. what she wanted. Exactly. I love how when she pops up, she doing a press run, okay? <laughs> she doing a press run. She just gives me very much um, businesswoman. About and her business, yep. I love that so, so, so much. And another one for me is definitely Kiki Palmer. I have loved Kiki Palmer since Akila and the Beat, okay? <laughs> and, and it's cool, like, seeing her grow, like, you know, getting older with us mm-hmm. and just pivoting into doing her own business stuff. My girl Kiki has always kept it real. Every time I watch an interview with her, like, it's no sugarcoating. And I love the people that are in Hollywood that really do that. Like, they, yeah. you know, they stick to being them. So I really appreciate that because I feel like that's hard to do. That's sure. And that's why I love Lauren, though, because it's like. I'm not doing what these other girls are doing. Yeah, because, like, why I got to do that? Like, I gotta do that. Um, yeah, and, like, I listen to, like, a lot of um, artists that, like, aren't mainstream. And it's, like, you get to see, like, I, I find so many different, especially when I'm, like, looking for new artists, like, different playlists and stuff like that. And, like, I'll look at some of their visuals and, like, some of their artwork and just listen to some of their music. And, like, I know, like, again, it's hard to, like, stay and really do your art how you want to do your art. And I just, I appreciate that so much. Like, people that just yeah. be seeing them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Um, now, do you think that characters in popular media, and that could include TV shows, movies, um, do you think they accurately represent women? Mainstream, like majority of the time, I would say. <laughs> no, okay, this is hard. I don't really watch TV, really. Oh, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like, okay. Like, okay. So I was about to say, and the TV that I do watch is not a good representation at all. It is literally because I just need to watch something to yeah. that I can put on and not have to think. Okay. Um, okay. I get that. <laughs> I was like, oh no, like. <laughs> No. <laughs> insecure and those shows insecure first of all is on my uh vision board every year because like that type of like sisterhood and friendship is, is mm -hmm. like what i love so like that yeah. they're always on my um vision boards every year but so i would say insecure since you used yeah. that as an example earlier yeah. i would say yeah I think is, insecure is definitely my comfort show i think yep. um before that what do we have we had what I guess you would say girlfriends. That was 20 million years ago. And also I was very young watching that. So when I rewatched it, I was like, mm. <laughs> and and that's, that's what I'm doing now. Like I don't even watch like the newer shows. Like I go back and rewatch Insecure 24 seven. I watch like Living Single, mm -hmm. Different World, Girlfriends, it. Moesha. Like I just, when I'm watching TV, it's like the older stuff. Yeah, no, I get that. Cause I do love yeah. watching stuff. Yeah, love me some me too. Well, it just depends, but um, yeah, I love just like that is a you know that just shows us what being in your twenties really really are are like going through the phases of like figuring it out, um, relationships in general, relationships with friends. Um, I think I do really appreciate that as like a body of work. Um, I don't know if you have ever watched if you've watched Abbott Elementary. Um, with I've Quentin. started. I've started. Yes. Like she is doing, uh, I just love how it's just in the school system, like representing like actual problems. Cause I have a friend that's a teacher, um, mm -hmm. representing actual problems, um, as being a teacher. And then like the story development in season two, like with character has been like super dope. Um, so yeah, I love that a lot. I think in general though, some of the other stuff I, I watch, I don't, I don't think so. I think in some aspects, like a lot of stuff sometimes is forced in. Yeah. You know what the other thing is? It's not really a lot of shows that's like for just us. I mean, like <clears throat> we had Insecure. Yeah. Um, but like a woman show, like Harlem. Oh yeah. I, watch that. I am watching Harlem right now. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we don't really have like a lot of different options. It's either like reality TV, go crazy, fight, be yeah. you know, messy, or yeah, one or two things that we can yeah. watch. Yeah, and um, and I don't mean anything about this when I bring this up. Um, so I know the girls like to tussle, but um, <laughs> <laughs> a little disclaimer. Mm -hmm. But um, so I had watched the show, which it's a it's a pretty decent show. It was on HBO, HBO Max. And um, it's called The Sex Life of College Girls. And basically, yeah, yeah, just showing the life of them in college. And so there is one of the girls, it is focused on four roommates. One of the girls, she is black. And I just feel like how they're painting her almost compared to another character that is white um, is like putting her in a space where she's not deemed beautiful. Like, and when she they brought her on to date like a new guy outside of her she broke up with her boyfriend and he was a white guy and i'm not saying that that's not possible of course because inter like you know everybody i want them to do their thing but yeah. it's just like in the storyline i just feel like it was forced and i'm like y'all had to make my girl go to a white man after she was with a black guy it, it's just yeah we don't get a lot of we don't get a lot of representation and i didn't see the connection on camera for me so i was just like I don't know. Sometimes it's just weird to me, like how I don't know, or like how people paint this picture of what they think it should go. But it's like, why do we have to belittle the black character? Yeah. You know? So some of that stuff, I just be like, I'm like, yeah, I might not even be watching next season. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> That's why it's so hard for me to. That really is why it's so hard for me to watch TV, other than like <clears throat> just trying to do a bunch of things. But um, mm -hmm. I like to like connect with the character. Like I, I need to feel like I'm living this show with you, and like. Yeah. Most of the shows they'll have like their token black girl who doesn't yeah. have the a good representation of like what a normal black girl's life would look, look like, I guess. And I'm like, that's all y'all got for me? Like, 
I'm good. It's, it's mad disappointing. <laughs> I also don't be watching TV a lot because binging is, I'd rather binge than like wait until next week. That's why I haven't finished Abbott Elementary because it was stressing me out. I was like, I do not want to wait until next week. I'll just wait the month and watch everything. No, I get that because that's, every time I do my show lineup for the week, I watch that last because it just makes me feel so good. Like, mm-hmm. and it's funny. And yeah, no, I get that because each episode is so short, but I appreciate that. Yeah. As well. But at the same yeah. time, I want more. No, I get exactly. that. Exactly. Oh, maybe I. That's how I was with Insecure too. That's why, like, I think I rewatch it so much because it's like, oh, I already know, like, like what's gonna happen. But like, but yeah, go right into it. And but sometimes I get peaks of stuff I didn't notice, and I'm like, that's crazy. I, I love that. I love when that happens. I've watched Insecure probably like ten times. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> and yeah. every few months, I always rewatch that uh, episode with her and Lawrence, like the parallel episode. Yes, I love that episode. Yes, with yeah. the red and the blue lights. Uh, they did what they needed to do. And you know why I appreciate Insecure? Mm-hmm. Because um, I'm trying to think about how long ago it was now. Because I stopped my semester. I didn't finish my classes yet. Um. But- <laughs> I was an art student um, like a, last year and um, we were, I was in a color theory class mm-hmm. and I was just like, wow, like insecure Easter Ray is making sure like the lighting for black people has to be like different. I mean, it just is what it, it has to be different. And like, they do that so well. Mm-hmm. And like how they make her, like they, they make her skin pop. Yes. And all of them. Yeah. All, all of them. them. All of them. And I think you see that in media too, a lot like photo shoots sometimes with, you know, with black people. I'm just like, who was on the lights? Like, this is fire and could be even more fire if y'all focused on accents, like in the lighting to their skin tone. Um, so yeah, this is like when people pay attention to those little things, like I appreciate the art so much more because you're really giving us like, you know, like, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Now, um, now you did mention earlier that you do still have your nine to five. So mm-hmm. at your nine to five, do you feel like you have to act differently because you are a black woman? Um, it's kind of different now because we're remote. Okay. Um, so no, because we're remote. Like I don't, we don't see each other, like really have much interaction. If it's not work related, like we're not really talking about much. And at yeah. work, like I'm just super professional. Yeah. Um, but I don't think I act like not like a black woman. I think I just act professional, a professional black woman. (laughs) (laughs) I think um, for me, it's the opposite. So I work remote as well too. Um, I'm thankful to have a job, so I'm not gonna talk shit. But but now it's like the team I'm on now is like, I'm the only black person. So, but I I stand on like being my black self at work. And sometimes it's fun. I just play on it, like making making some of them uncomfortable. But like mm-hmm. now, it's like I'm in a space when I'm on the team, being the only black person. It's just like some of the subjects they were talk be talking about, like I can't relate. And the other mm-hmm. day they were talking about hair, and I just didn't turn my camera on because <laughs> I didn't want the, you know, I don't. Yeah. Sometimes I do get the oohs and ahs, like comments yeah. and certain stuff about, yeah. it. and I'm just like, mm, I'm just being, I'm here just being a person, and yeah. sometimes I just feel so out of place. Mm-hmm. And although, you know, professionally, yeah, I know how, you know, I, like you were saying, like, I conduct myself as a professional black woman, but I do feel like sometimes I have to bend and act excited when I'm not. So I hope to be one day in a, in a, in a job where I don't have to do that. Yeah, I definitely feel that. I think that, I'll, what, what school did you go to? High school? High school and college, I guess. Uh, I went to Granby. For high school, and then I uh, bat, uh, undergraduate at North State. Okay, so you were like around majority black people. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I went to a majority white high school. I went to Grassfield, and then I went to CNU, which is a PWI. So like, I think that I already went through those moments so much, and like high school and college that like now I'm really like I don't care. like you're gonna yeah. have to exist with me. And this is how I am, and yeah. you better leave it. Like, and interesting too, because um, I recently moved um from Virginia. I live in North Carolina, and one of the friends I made here, he was. We were talking, and for me, like, so I'm 
I would say I'm around more white people now, which for me, it's fine. Like, I think it's an experience because I grew up mainly black. But see, I was hearing his perspective on things. And like he went to like a private school that was predominantly white and yeah. been in an area with a lot of white people. And he was telling me about his experience. And it's like, it's not that I never thought about that, but it's just like, OK, so it's like just because we're both black, our experiences. Very different. different. And yeah. yeah, I've been trying to be cognizant of that like when i have different conversations and stuff like that it's it's just interesting i'm like wow your experience was just really different from mine Mm -hmm. um and for my when i went to grad school it was online but i went to american university predominantly white school so that's all i was around too and that was that was different that was different as well because all my professors i think i just had one black professor and then i'm just like oh okay okay (laughs) yeah yeah, different space, different. Okay. And I have to remember too, because sometimes you'll get into that conversation. You again, Twitter, <laughs> you get into the conversations <laughs> about, you know, some of the black men celebrities that, you know, that date white women and all that. But like also, we don't think about their background. Yeah. And like who they've been around. And like just because that's their preference, like people will judge people on that and their preference. Well, it's like that's what they were around. And, and they like that. That's fine. But you know what I'm saying? It's just different because we all have. Yeah. To- I, I uh, when I was in college, I met a guy, um, mm-hmm. and he was from Africa, and so he never seen white white people before. Like he was, I don't remember which country. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, so he's from Africa. He never seen white people. He came here in high school. He came to American high school. Moved to Nova. Predominantly white schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and so all he saw was white women. So he was like so like mesmerized, I guess, that he only was interested in white women for like a period of his life. And then like, and I would hear those conversations of like the celebrities dating like white women once they get their status. And it's like, huh, I wonder like if that, that yeah, like yeah. what made because I don't think that all the celebrities is like become a celebrity date a white woman. Like yeah, I, I, and I don't and I don't think of it like that is either. Yeah. But it's just, it's probably like a like a shift. Like okay, you in the spotlight, yeah. and then like you're just around things that you weren't around. Like, exactly, you have access to stuff that you never had access to before. Like maybe it's like I don't know a celebrity who like grew up in the hood. Like you probably were not around them to even know what they were like. That was like you yeah. have access to it. You probably are like intrigued or interested, even if it's not something that you stick with long term. Because like yeah. now, like the guy he has a black girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, but like he did have a phase where it was just like all white women because that was new. Yeah, and I'd be yeah, the internet's boy, they'd be tearing people apart. I'd be like, and see, and I'm always that type of person that be trying to see stuff from different different. Yeah, ways. you can see how people don't. Um, but yeah, this is interesting because people can be a product of their environment, but when they get into a new mm-hmm. environment, it's just like, well, they can be a product of that environment. Yeah. Hmm, okay, and then so as as women. And as black women, we are very strong individuals. What do you feel like your superpower is? I feel like my superpower, okay. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. Me and my therapist just talked about this too. Um, I feel like my superpower, I feel like it's a few. I feel like one of them is that, because um, I feel like it's a superpower and like a weakness kind of, but I am like super empathetic. I am very forgiving. I will give you 10,000 chances because I understand that life lives. And yeah, I like really give everybody grace to the max. Like I, we will max out the grace before I cut you off. I think that that's like my superpower, but I also think it's bad because like boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I would say me as well. Um, yeah, I and and if I decide I care about you, yo, like yeah, we locked the end. Yes, we <laughs> ain't no switching up. Okay, no switching up. <laughs> and and that's why I think sometimes, like when I've had like different, you know, scenarios with people, and, and or when I get to the point where all right, bro, I'm done. Like I'm done. Like people don't understand. It takes me a very long time to get Listen. to that point. It takes me very long. And it's just like, all right, if I was telling you, it's just like, then I'd be feeling bad about that. But it's like, I gave you different chances. And I never feel bad about giving people chances because that's what I want to do. Like, yeah. but like where you were saying with boundaries, like I had to learn like what boundaries are. And it's just like, okay, so these people, they kind of showing you who they are. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have those instances where you have to use discernment. It's like, yo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've been trying, I've been having to find my balance with that. Cause yeah, I would, the chances. Yeah. 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 
Well, I feel like that's like a thing. I, th- I think that, uh, I don't know if it's a black woman thing, but I think that we are just like a more caring, more like, I don't know. I think people be trying to paint us out as like hard, but like black women are super soft. Yeah. Yeah. But see, I've had to come to terms with that because like I used to be a super hard person. I still have my moments. Um, So that's the exterior I've been breaking down. The exterior though, but really. Yeah. 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 yeah, but then, yeah, that's really love a girl for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just because I'm always that type of person that tries to see the side of every type of situation. Um, mm-hmm. Even when one of my friends that I recently made here, you know, we'll talk about certain things and I'll ask her, like, so did you think that this person was going through this? Or like, I always try to look at every side of the scenario um, because sometimes we need that outlook, right? Um, sometimes people need that perception of it. It's just like, yo, did you look at this before you get mad about that? Like, I've always been, I've always You know what my therapist always says? She always says, feelings aren't facts. And it's like, you really have to check all the other, like, perspectives. Like, because you feel that way doesn't mean that that's what it is. Like, that's you feeling, experiencing that feeling. But like, yeah. And I went through that period uh, when I used to project. I used to do that. Um, <laughs> leading with my emotions sometimes. And like, now that I'm able to step outside of that, mm-hmm. it's just like, mm, you're taking things personally again. When it, it when it's not even about you. Right? It's it not has about nothing you. to do with you. Not, yeah. It has nothing to do with you. And, and majority of the time, that's how it is though. Majority yeah. of the time, when people are going through it and like they projecting or they're, I don't know, they're presenting themselves in a way that like maybe we don't want to be involved with them. Like that has nothing to do with me. Yeah, yeah, I've been having. Like, I don't know what this person went through today. I don't know what who somebody texted them right before they walked up to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just don't know. And sometimes I'd be like, "All right, let me get them some time," because like mm-hmm. maybe they didn't even mean that. And yeah, I'm like, "Let me get them some time." And then sometimes you, after you talk to them later, you'd be like, oh, "Okay, so that wasn't even exactly. what exactly that was a misunderstanding." Yeah. Mm-hmm. We love the girl. <laughs> And another, <laughs> and another superpower of mine is I'm very multifaceted. Like, again, I've been having a problem. I, I used to do that in a very unhealthy way. But I think I'm very much okay with, like, having my hands in a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and I think I've realized that, too, as I find, like, you know, how I want to help people. And I figured out how to do that with my podcast. But, like, helping people in other aspects of life. Um, but yeah, I just, again, I just been having to find my balance with that. Cause like, I can overload myself, but I love, I do love being multifaceted. Like I can do anything. I'm very confident. I can do or learn anything. I, I think that that's one of mine too. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. Cause like me and my mom always talk about, cause my mom, I, I feel like I watched her like be super busy growing up. So like, I don't know, maybe that's one of the things that like I got from her. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that just like, I I enjoy being busy. I enjoy having my hands in a lot of things. But I think that people who don't get that, they're like, you're going to burn yourself out. Like, slow down. You need to take a break. And I'm like, no, I'm actually like having the most fun of my life right now. <laughs> like, this is actually yeah, great. Yeah. Like, Why are you still going? Like, I don't understand. I'm like, no, this is, this yeah, is, this is great. Like, yeah. that's really when I'm in my best too. When I'm exactly. working on something and I'm engaged. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, I'm really doing that thing and I am enjoying this right now. Yeah, yeah. I love I love those moments. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, what would, what's a trait that others see in you that you don't or you didn't see at first? If anything. I feel like, the, I know, I feel like there's a lot. <laughs> um, I think that me being so forgiving and like, I don't know. I think that that was one of the things that I used to not be able to see until my friends were like, you really like don't cut people off. Like, unless I absolutely have to, but like, you don't cut people off. Like you give everybody multiple chances. You like listen before, you know, you just decide that you want to walk out of somebody's life. Like, so I don't know. I think that's one of my traits. Cause it's like for, for so long in my head, I was like, Oh, I'm done with these people. Like I am not doing this. And it's like, no, actually I am still giving you a lot more grace than, I realized. Yeah, I would say the same for me too. Like, I used to be the girl that, no, I'm not blocking nobody. Why you be blocking? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Um, And having people like, yo, why are you still talking to them? Why are you still doing Mm -hmm. that? 
And then I had a, I came to a certain point in my life. I'm like, damn, them, pe- them people was right. Like, <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> like, why was I out there doing that? Or sometimes that made it hard for me to see a situation for what it was. Yeah. Um, just because I was giving people that grace or like, they didn't mean that like that. Mm-hmm. Like, no, but no, they did. <laughs> and I just, yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> um, now, what do you feel like is one of your traits that you feel like you need to work on, like still an it for you, like a thing that you do and you're like, oh, I don't like that I be doing that. <laughs> oh, procrastination. But I realized, okay, I just had this conversation with my friend the other day. Okay. I recently realized that my procrastination comes from my perfectionism. Yes. The reason why I will not, like I will wait until the last minute before things are done because in my head I am changing the plan 15 times to make sure that this is how it's going to look yeah when it's like just do it like just do it and then fix it later on yeah same that's how it was with my business like I was not about to put great yourself out but I was like women's history month is about to end yeah what else am I waiting? Like, no, my website isn't exactly what I want it to look like. No, like everything isn't exactly what I want it to look like, but like do it. Yeah. Same. That's the thing that my, uh, my thing that I'm living by this year is like, do it scared. Just do it. Cause I'd be scared that it's not about to turn out perfect. And that's why I don't do it. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. I struggle with that too. Like on two different. So I think one reason why I feel like I procrastinate is the anxiety of doing the test. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'd be like, I'd be thinking the test is so hard. And then I started it and I'm like, girl, like, why did you take forever to start? Exactly. That and then another side of me too, like the trying to be perfect. It's just like, yo, even when I was talking about starting my podcast, I remember the day that I started, I was so down and out and I was just like, yo, just my friend was telling me you can literally just start with the voice app. And that's what I did. I just recorded something and I just put it out. And it was literally as simple as that. And sometimes I do go through these phases um, with trying to be perfect. Because like, for instance, with my previous guest episode that I just recorded last week before yours, I'm sending her clips and stuff like that. And I'm saying some, I told her some stuff about the quality. I'm mad that I zoomed in and the quality got taken down a little bit. And she was like, what were you saying about the quality again? I was like... Uh, not you <laughs> she was like I think it, it'll be fine and I'm like dang okay it's just like I be trying to do that perfect thing but it's like if you're waiting for something to be perfect you may not ever do it and exactly and I don't want to be looking back and it's like wishing that I did that thing and it's like why am I waiting so long and then yeah. another reason why I procrastinate is because ooh, that part of me I like the thrill of getting something down done in a condensed time so like I can do this <laughs> okay I just realized that about myself but because yeah. it'll be the simplest of tasks mm-hmm. like my manager needed me to send an email by like five o'clock mm-hmm. and she told me I like two mm-hmm. and I waited until like four to start preparing this email and it's like I don't know why I waited so long it's yeah. just I know that I can do it real fast so let me see how fast I can do it real quick yeah <laughs> I used to do that in college a lot too I used to do with papers and everything like Yo, I wrote, I wrote a 12 page paper and I, I started, I didn't start it until 10 PM. It was due the next day. And I was wild. <laughs> that, that was me. I got a B on that paper. Now. <laughs> that was me in college for real. I love a challenge, but I think that that's one of my, um, that's another one of the good and bad traits. Cause like, yeah. I love challenge. I do too. I do too. I'll be like, Rainy, you, you can do that. Like, why you can do that? <laughs> And then I think also to another trait that I want to, that, like I mentioned earlier, asking for help. Like, yeah, I'd be like, girl, you don't even, like one of my friends, she was telling me, um, I think I was, it was my table I was building here in my apartment or something like that. And she was like, when I was telling about, she was like, why you didn't ask me to help for help? And I was like, well, I wanted to see if I could do it by myself first. I do that with like everything. And I just be like, girl, it's literally okay to ask somebody for help. And that was just the simplest of things. But like yeah. even with life advice sometimes when mm-hmm. I'm struggling with a decision, I'm like, it's okay to get somebody else's point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I struggle with that. I I I struggle with it. I'm trying to figure out I, I don't I don't think I struggle with that. I think it's something that um I used to struggle with for sure because now 
I'll call whoever. Like, I don't care. Like, please help me. I do not want to be stressed. Like, yeah, yeah. Whatever I can do to minimize the stress, I'm gonna do right now. Um, but I did used to like miss independent, hyper independent. Like, I don't need anybody else until I need somebody. You know, like that's really how I used to be. Yeah. Same. And I realized that like I could have got so much stuff done and so much quicker if I would have just asked for help. Yeah. <laughs> I've been learning that, like, so I had and time. Like, stress, like, you could have really got this done. Yeah, and I, I've been, yeah, I've been better at it at times, but I still be feeling me reverting back, and I'm just like, girl, no, you got people that help you, just ask for help. Yeah. Yeah, for real. And then lastly here, my last question for you, that I always like to ask all of my guests. Okay. Um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what would you tell your younger self? I am um, actually in the process of writing a letter to my younger self. Ah, nice. <laughs> that's one of my prompts, too, in the prompted journal is to write a letter to your younger self. So that's the one that I'm working on right now because, yeah, I feel like I'm in this new phase and I've never been here before. Um, so what would I tell my younger self? You did everything you said you were going to do and you're still doing it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> literally i am doing every like i'm living yeah. my dream i'm yeah. living my dream for real yeah that's good to hear yeah. um, and although i ask every guest i think last time i actually answered it myself i don't think i ever answered it um so i said something different with my last guest um i think for me be proud of who you are you know i went through a phase where even yeah, as a kid like i just questioned my place in this world and around mm. the that that I was in and now like I'm in that that happier space of like really truly loving who I am. So yeah, I would just really I would tell her to love herself. Like girl, yeah. you, you are lovable. Do, do yeah. not think that you are not capable of receiving love. Exactly. Well yes, Brittany, well, thanks so much for talking to me today. I appreciate it. And I am gonna link all of Brittany's stuff in the description. So check out her site. If you are local um, in Norfolk, check out some of her events that she's gonna have coming up. So I'm gonna include the link to her site and to her Instagram. And yeah, Brittany, you wanna say something before we <laughs> um, Make sure you all are giving yourself grace, for real. You're not perfect. You are a human. You are not a robot. You will make mistakes. Give yourself grace. New Grace Yourself products come in very, very soon, probably by the time this drops, if not by the time this drops, right after. Um, we're turning two this year. Yay. So, yeah, Grace Yourself, be on the lookout. It's a lot of things coming. Be nice. on the lookout. <laughs> I love that so much. And, yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.